This is part 82 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss role-based authorization in ASP.NET Core. Authentication is the process of identifying who the user is. Authorization is the process of identifying what the user can and cannot do. Authorization in ASP.NET Core MVC is controlled through the authorize attribute. When the authorize attribute is used in its simplest form without any parameters, it only checks if the user is authenticated. This is called simple authorization. We discussed simple authorization in detail in part 71 of this ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss role-based authorization. Consider this piece of code. In this example, we have decorated the administration controller with the authorized attribute and have set the roles parameter to administrator. So, for a logged in user to be able to reach this controller or the action methods within this controller, he must be a member of the administrator role. Otherwise, they would not have access. Let's look at this in action. At the moment, we are on the list roles view. Let's edit admin role. To this role, we want to add a user. Let's make Prajim at PrajimTech.com a member of the admin role. Notice this user, Prajim at PrajimTech.com, is now a member of the admin role. At this point, let's flip over to Visual Studio and decorate administration controller with the authorize attribute. Bring in the required namespace. If we leave the authorize attribute like this without any parameters, then the only thing it checks is if the user that is trying to access this controller is logged in. This is called simple authorization and we discussed this in detail in part 71. Now our requirement is the user trying to access this controller or the controller action methods must be a member of the admin role. For that, let's set the roles parameter to admin. Remember the name of the role is admin. So it has to match this string exactly. So let's set roles to admin. Save our changes. At the moment, we are not logged in. Let's try to navigate to slash administration slash list roles. Notice we are redirected to the login page. Let's log in using the username prajim at prajimtech.com. Provide the password and hit the login button. There we go. We are logged in as Prajim at PrajimTech.com and we are able to reach the list role section within the administration controller. Remember, for the user to be able to access the administration controller or its action methods, he has to be a member of the admin role. Our user, Prajim at PrajimTech.com, is a member of the admin role, so we are able to access the list roles action. Now let's log out and log in as a different user. Click on the login link and let's log in using the username abc at gmail.com. We are logged in. Now let's try to navigate to slash administration slash list roles. Notice we are automatically redirected to slash account slash access denied. For this user to be able to access the administration controller or its action methods, he must be a member of the admin role. Now, let's look at another variation of using the roles parameter. Consider this piece of code. In this example, we have specified multiple roles by separating them with a comma. So, to access this administration controller or its actions, the logged in user must be a member of either the administrator role or the user role. Let's do the same for our project. Let's separate the roles with a comma. Save our changes and remember, for these changes to take effect, we must log out and log back in. At the moment, we are logged in using the username abc at gmail.com. Let's log out and log back in. Keep in mind, this user abc at gmail.com is not a member of either the admin role or the user role. So if we try to navigate to slash administration slash list roles, we should be redirected to access denied action. Now let's log out and log back in using the username prajim at prajimtech.com. This user is a member of the admin role, so we should be able to reach slash administration slash list roles. Now let's edit the user role and make abc at gmail.com a member 
of the user role. There we go. abc at gmail.com is now a member of the user role. Let's log out and log back in using the username abc at gmail.com. Because this user is now a member of the user role, we should be able to reach slash administration slash list roles. There we go. Now, let's look at another variation of using the authorized attribute. We can include multiple instances of the authorized attribute. Consider this piece of code. In this example, we have included two instances of the authorized attribute. So, to reach this version of the administration controller, the logged in user must be a member of both these roles, that is the administrator role and the user role. Let's include another instance of the authorized attribute and here let's specify the role as the user and on this instance let's specify the admin role. Save our changes and take a look at the browser. At the moment, I'm logged in using the username test at pregimetech.com. Behind the scenes, I made this user a member of both these roles, admin and user. And remember, to be able to reach the administration controller, the logged in user must be a member of both these roles. And because this user is a member of both the roles, we should be allowed access to slash administration slash list roles. Now, if I try to log in using the username pregim at pregimetech.com, or abc at gmail.com, we will not be allowed access because they are either a member of the admin role or the user role, but not both the roles. So let's log out and log back in using the username pregim at pregimtech.com. We are logged in. Let's navigate to slash administration slash list roles. There we go. We are not allowed access. Authorized attribute can be specified either at the controller level or individual action level or both. Consider this example. Notice at the controller level, we have included one instance of the authorized attribute and specified multiple roles by separating them with a comma. So this authorization setting is applicable for the entire controller. That is for all the actions within this controller unless we have overridden the settings by including another instance of the authorized attribute or allow anonymous attribute. So with these authorization checks in place, members of either the administrator role or user role will have access to the ABC action. On the other hand, only members of the administrator role will have access to XYZ action. Finally, since we have decorated the action method anyone with allow anonymous attribute, anyone can reach this action method, including anonymous users. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.